My name is Amy Hutton, and I'm the compiler of the international best-selling book, Inch by Inch, Growing in Life, where the most amazing authors came together, one of them being Denise Nelson. I want to read to you today her chapter called Understanding the Divinity of Oneself. I am transgendered to spirit. Even at an early age of eight months, I understood we are born intelligent beings, created that way by our Creator. Hidden from us is the knowledge of who each of us truly is. Lies are fed to us, numbing us down. Yet there has always been a few of us that have held our contract and followed through by setting the example of how each of us is to be true to our higher self. I am transgendered to spirit, born in a male body, yet always wanting to be a girl. I grew up with no one to talk to about whom and what I felt I truly was. It would be 43 years later before I would come across the information that would free me, the day that the female aspect of me would finally be able to see the light of day on a continual basis. The closet was being torn down, no more hiding. Yet the self-abuse would still continue for a few more years. Some of that self-abuse had drifted over into the family that I had helped raise with my wife of 25 years. This is one of the unique connections we have to one another, our connection to all that is around us, in one form or another. We all have a closet to break out of, a closet to tear down, to find the self-love of being a perfect creation. In perfection, we experience many imperfections. This is one of the ways each of us discovers our true essence. As I would speak at a very young age, just being me, I noticed people would be uncomfortable with what I said. Even my actions of playing with a doll brought out the uncomfortable feelings in people. When a group of kids got together in the community that I was living in, I was excluded and lied to. I was told there was not enough room for me. The blatant self-evident truth that there was room for me made me wonder why they were being so mean. Being different in their eyes, being different from what they had been taught, somehow that made me look freakish to them. That is how I felt with the attributes and attitudes they put out toward me. Sticks and stones may break my bones, or even kill us. Attitudes, lies, and gossip, they leave permanent emotional scars. So, to survive life, I learned at an early age to adjust, hide, blend in, to be like others. Doing all this at the expense of not being true to myself. When one is not true to their own self, the guilt brings on so much self-abuse and breeds the disdain of not liking yourself. I am supposedly of divine origin like everyone else. Where else would we come from? We are either of divine origin or we are genetically created by scientists. Or we are adopted into the divine origin through certain ceremonies. In each of us, there is a built-in system that says, I will live at all costs. I must survive to stay alive. If you could only understand how many times I would think of just ending my life. In my teenage years, it was Saturday when everyone was gone to town. That's when the girl would come out. Such joy in the light out of the closet. Five or six beautiful hours going through my mom's closet. Then just before the family got home, the girl would reluctantly give up and go back to being in the closet, away from the light, back into the darkness. The rest of the week would be the same, beating myself up ritual, vowing to never do this again. Then Saturday rolled around, and the girl was beating at the closet door, wanting her dress on, wanting the feminine to be in the light. Out she would come for a few more hours, and the next cycle of abuse would start all over again. Another round of self-abuse. As I write this, I see that I was very much involved in a marathon of self-abuse. Years of self-abuse. 
It was all verbal abuse. I look at this now, and wow, I'm still here writing this. I have survived. It was in 1997 when I first got on the internet. I pulled the words cross-dresser. I was so amazed to find there were so many others like me. I was not a lonely freak, one of a kind. There were others, many others, like me. Creator was with me all the way on this search. I found nothing but beautiful, uplifting people that were grounding to the source of life. All I did was research, read, and talk. Wow, yet something was still not right. Something was missing. I remember the day so well. That day, I found about the two-spirit people. Thank you, Wendy Susan Parker, for the article on the two-spirit people. We were highly reserved in tribes as healers, counselors, therapists, shamans, and witch doctors, highly sought after for our abilities in those areas. We were also called the third gender. It was the first time in my whole life I actually excited about me. This started the creation of the journey, creating in my heart the role of a two-spirit. Two spirits are usually taught the way by the elders. I had no elders to teach me, so I connected with my heart. I listened to my heart. I worked at being a two-spirit, speaking it, walking it, living it. As a boy, I lived that life good. I had to, being raised on the farm. I can only imagine how much better life would have been if I had the freedom to be all me. I learned at an early age how to blend in. It was more important to be safe and alive. There really is a difference between acting out a life, living it. There are days I still long to be full genetic woman with a moon time. I guess there may be a magical transference one day when I will have life all together. So in the meantime, I work each day at being me, embracing me. As one teacher taught me, I embrace this man, I embrace this woman, I love this man, I love this woman, I express this man, I express this woman, for I am both man and woman. I am a two-spirit. We two-spirits are gift from Creator. We are gifts to humanity. It has not been an easy walk for me, yet I am still here. May we all walk our path with dignity, for each of us is connected to all that is around us through the Delta 10 mitochondrial DNA. It is time for all abuse to be done, and all women, children, males, spouses, and all forms of transgendered people stop hurting each other themselves. This is what I learned, that when I noticed myself with respect, others would notice me with respect too. This is how we break the cycles of abuse, when we all start respecting the essence of our own life. That is when this Mother Earth will make her shift. We are an extension of Mother Earth. What we do to ourselves and others, we do to her. Why would we harm our mother? Why would we harm ourselves? To all my relations, love yourself. Thank you for listening. It has been a pleasure and an honor to have Denise in my book. I miss her greatly, and I think about her often. All my relations, hi, hi. Thank you.